Backstory. I, 40s female, was adopted as a baby and had an adopted older brother. Parents adopted us both, but we're not related to each other biologically. Brother, 40s male, has some mental issues, and they've been present his whole life. Mother used this as an excuse to give him more attention while obviously ignoring me. Every few years throughout my life, she would literally attempt to remove me from the family. Biggest example was when she left me at a mental hospital after they told her they couldn't admit me because there was nothing wrong with me. I became a ward of the state since she had effectively abandoned me. I was brought back home before my birthday that year, so my grandma, dad's mom, didn't find out what mother had done. My dad died quite a while ago, three years after his mom, and I was still in my early 20s, so didn't think about inheritance or whatnot. Mother and I reconnected a few years ago, and I thought we had made progress in having an adult relationship. Then she told me that she's redoing dad's trust to lower my percentage and give my portion to my nephew, 20s male. I contacted a lawyer and they recommended I request a copy of the trust, since I'm legally entitled as a beneficiary. Mother, executor and trustee, refuses to even admit that I'm listed now and won't answer any questions about the trust other than to tell me that she's going to inform before and he'll be in charge. I know I have a right to fight for my inheritance, but I can't help feel guilty for taking it this far. Mother also continuously tells me how I'm a horrible daughter in person and how she's always disappointed in me. But golden child brother can do no wrong, even though he's been in and out of jail, which resulted in mother having to raise nephew. I'm also getting a lot of negative comments from brother and nephew. So am I the a-hole for forcing my mother to show me the trust paperwork? Not the a-hole. Do whatever you need to do to survive and thrive. You have no reason in the world to care about what she thinks or feels. I hope that better times are ahead. Not the a-hole. The trust represents the father's wishes, not the mother's. She has no right to unilaterally determine whether the trust should be changed. Get a lawyer to take over for you. Listen to me. You are not a horrible daughter, but clearly she is a horrible mother. She is lying and trying to steal from you. Don't feel guilty about anything. She probably would prefer that you don't exist at all. She tried to abandon you, not the a-hole. I, 20 male, got the largest share of inheritance from my grandparents' trust who declared me their heir. The rest of my family got some inheritance also, but mine is considerably larger than anyone else's. The money is basically untouchable for me until I become 22. As most of my family, parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, etc., have been living extremely luxuriously on my grandparents' money and not really working, they are not happy with the way the estate has been distributed and are trying to make me sign over the money. Here's where it gets complicated. I have a half-brother, seven male, from my father's affair. Three years ago, his mother died and he showed up on our doorstep. I can kind of get why my mother and her family hate him, but it's not his fault. He's just an innocent kid. As an illegitimate child, he's really picked on and looked down on by my stupid snobbish family. The only one who cares about him at all is me. My parents have offered to sign over custody to me now in exchange for the inheritance. I refused because I figure I will be able to sue for custody once I have the inheritance. Can hire good lawyers. And raising a kid is expensive. I need everything I can get for him. My aunt says I am the a-hole because two more years of my brother living as a fatherless child while I'm in college will destroy him. And I can save him if I just give up my inheritance. Not the a-hole. Get the agreement that they will give you custody of this kid in exchange for your trust, inheritance in writing. Say you'll think about it and squirrel that away for when you sue for custody. I'm sure the judge and social services would love to see how your family tried to basically sell you a kid. Seriously though, your family is being disgusting and manipulative. Think about it this way. If you buy this child, oof, you'll now have zero inheritance and be a single father trying to finish a degree. Kids are expensive. You'll need every penny for the both of you once you gain access to the trust. As even with a degree, it can take a good couple years to get a good salary depending on your field. Record them if your state or province allows one-party consent recording on private property. If you see mistreatment of your brother or if he describes something to you, write it down with names and dates and times and keep that as well. Document, document, document. I'm not a lawyer. But it might be worth saving up a few hundred bucks to consult with a family law attorney to see what your options are. Perhaps there are even stipulations for early access to the trust due to life circumstances, though that would be found out through your executor, estate attorney. So, uh, yeah, you might have to talk to a lot of lawyers, but I'm sure something can be figured out. 
You're ducking awesome, and a good sibling for looking out for this kid, by the way. Not the a-hole. Your grandparents made the decision to give you that money, and their wishes should be respected. Also, it sounds like a lot of your family might be giant jerks. Lawyer the duck up to help the kid, while taking zero non-professional advice on what to do and agreeing to nothing. And don't worry about all of them. Not the a-hole. Don't listen to them. Your family is just trying to trick you out of an inheritance. No court will allow a broke kid fresh out of college custody, so you will definitely need that inheritance. Keep showing your half-brother love and reassure him that you're going to do everything in your power to gain custody of him. Also, start documenting the way your family treats him. It'll be useful in court. Update. Shortly after the posting, I got a high fever and was pretty out of it for two days. When I recovered, my little brother was acting very strange and avoiding me. He wouldn't speak to me and hid behind my cousin or aunt, whoever was the closest relative in the room. Confronting my relatives was useless. They just acted irritatingly smug and told me I should give up on trying to get custody of the kid when he couldn't even be in the same room as me. I was finally able to get my little brother alone in the courtyard and tried to ask him what happened. He ran out into the road, right in front of an oncoming car. It was dark, and he's only seven, small for his age. I knew even as he was running that there was no way the driver can see him. I don't really remember the next few moments. I remember shouting for him to stop and the bright white headlights. The next thing I knew, my heart was pulsing in my ears, and the kid was wrapped in my arms, trembling but safe. I had managed to pull him back right before impact. I think he was really shaken up by the near accident, and he basically has a meltdown. It turns out that my little brother has another older brother, 11, from his mother's side. He is currently in the system. My relatives had been threatening to have him sent to some juvenile center if my little brother didn't start distancing himself from me. They could probably do this. CPS is basically a joke here. They also warned him not to tell me about his brother, because I would be pissed that there was another older half-brother. I was pissed, but not for the reasons they claimed. After taking my brother to the doctor, he had trouble breathing when he was explaining. I went straight to the lawyer. I didn't feel like I could risk leaving him in their custody for another two years. Unfortunately, the requirements for the inheritance were strict. Either I needed to have a degree at 22, getting the degree earlier would not help, had to be 22 also, or I could get married. As some of you pointed out, this was much more immediately achievable. I explained the situation to my girlfriend. We got married and I got the inheritance. Some of you had also suggested documenting my relatives' behavior for when I sue them for custody. Unfortunately, they were careful not to do anything dubious in writing, and I couldn't record them without consent for court evidence. I could, however, threaten to anonymously send those recordings to the media if they didn't sign over custody immediately. Nobody wanted to risk the PR backlash, so my parents signed pretty quick. I also hired a private investigator to find my brother's other brother and get custody, so there was no more leverage. To be honest, I was a little worried what it would be like, but he's really sweet and a lot like my little brother. I don't think he's gotten to have much of a childhood, because he's always surprised when I include him in anything. It's really great to see them so happy. They were crying when they finally got united. I'm really relieved that my brother doesn't have to deal with my insane relatives now, but I'm also really worried about what to do going forward. I'm still in college, and I'm only 20. I don't feel ready to parent my brother. I don't think it's possible for me to do worse than my parents, but I don't know how to do it well. And with my little brother's brother, I'm really afraid I'll give him an inferiority complex by accidentally or subconsciously not treating him equally. I feel like he's a good kid at heart, but he's also largely still a stranger to me. I'm also not sure what boundaries I should draw between my girlfriend and the kids. Our relationship is still pretty new, and we only married so I could get the inheritance. To be honest, I would be surprised if this lasted long term because 1. This is our first relationship, if you don't count middle school. 2. We've been friends for years, but dating only a few months. 3. Her career plan involves a lot of international travel, whereas mine is more domestic. I'm feeling anxious that I may end up ruining their lives. My ex and I were together for about 18 months when we found out I was two months pregnant. In this time, we were exclusive but he asked for a paternity test. He said he was suspicious that I got pregnant despite using protection, and he didn't want any part of a pregnancy he didn't cause. The test proved it was his, and he said he was glad to have the proof, but when I asked why he doubted me, he went off about how he had a right to know if it was his baby or not. Never said he didn't, but had no other reasons. 
I said that given he had no other reasons, an apology would be nice, and things escalated from there. He began packing up his stuff and told me to contact him when I gave birth, saying that he'd be there for the baby, but he was done with me. During my entire pregnancy, we've had about three exchanges. Two were me saying when I had a scan, then sending him a picture of the scan, which he didn't respond to. Yesterday, he messaged me saying, boy name, Jack Daniel Smith, girl name, Jackie Daniela Smith. Fake names, but same phrasing. I said I don't like those names, and he said he was the father, and our kid is going to have his surname. So the first and middle names are his choice. I responded that they're not having his surname. He then said that as he'd be in the delivery room, and he'd be there for the post-birth, he would be the one filling out the certificate, and you're going to be off your tits. You're not really going to change it. So, given that he basically said that while I'm coming off the birth, he's going to fill out our child's birth certificate with Jack or Jackie and Daniel or Daniela Smith against my wishes. I've said that I'm not going to let him into the delivery room. The hospital is currently limiting the delivery room to one person, and post-birth I'm allowed up to two visitors, and I need to give actual names so they can ask for ID and limit the people going in and out to be safe. He asked who I was having in the room, and I said no one. But my dad and my other ex can visit post-birth. Other ex is allowed to bring our five-year-old son, and we'd work out a time for him to come see the baby after I'm discharged. Since I told him, my ex has been saying he can't believe I'd exclude him from the birth of his child, and that I'm being petty over the DNA test, claiming that given my closeness with my ex, the father of my first child, he had a right to be worried, and that keeping him away from the birth is spiteful. However, He's also still saying that he has a right to name his child how he wants, as he didn't get to name his first child, with another woman, and that if he has the option, our child will be Jack or Jackie, Daniel, Daniela Smith. However, I feel that since I've done this whole pregnancy alone, I have a right to decide who will and won't be there when I give birth, and given that he barely even has a relationship with his firstborn, I shouldn't let him dictate the name. I think I might be the a-hole because odds are, He's just overreacting due to the emotional charge accompanying the situation. And best case scenario is he shows up, isn't a jerk, and sees the birth of his child, which means a lot to him as he wasn't able to for his first child. Worst case scenario, he tries to fill out the birth certificate without me, which won't work as I'll be able to call him out at the time or just change the name later. Am I the a-hole for keeping him away? Not the a-hole. Sounds like he's a loon. Get a family member to reach out to hospital staff or security to protect your room. Drop this fool like a bad habit and get away from him. Not the a-hole. Keep him far the duck away and make sure the hospital has his name so they know who not to let in. Naming the baby should be a compromise, but the whole his way or the highway thing ducking sucks. Yeet the man. Keep the baby and go after him for child support. You got this, mama. Not the a-hole. You absolutely have the right to say who should and shouldn't be with you when you give birth. You also don't really have to listen to his input on names either, and he was the one who offered no alternative or compromise. He doesn't trust you. That hurt your feelings. You asked him to apologize. He didn't, and now the relationship is over. Not unreasonable. It's also not unreasonable to want to be there for the birth of his child and have a say in the name. Having a conversation with the mother of his child and acting like it has to be 100% his way just because he says so is not okay. My, 17 female, sister, 32 female, works in IT and has her dream job, which allows her to travel quite a bit and work remotely as she pleases. But beyond that, she makes really good money and seems to take more PTO than she does actually work. She's not outright obnoxious with her money, but she's still annoying with it. She is constantly sending photos of her trips all over to the family group chat. This year alone, she's visited five states and three different countries. Some for work, some for her working remotely, but some just for fun too. She has designer bags, a nice car, all her loans paid off, a great apartment with a jacuzzi tub. She's also a philanthropist and volunteer. Last week, she invited me and my parents to a charity dinner where she is to receive an award for being an Animal Rescue's biggest donor event. On top of that, she fosters animals of said charity. So you can imagine my parents are immensely proud of her. It's always look at my beautiful, brilliant, philosophical, worldly, rich, compassionate daughter. And here's our youngest daughter. Yes, I am jealous of her. The other day, she took me to this expensive hibachi dinner. She told me she would like to pay for my college in full, 
with the caveat that I will do part-time work-study, be in a minimum of one club, and when or if I were to end up making $70,000 a year after graduation, I would pay her back over the course of 10 years with no interest. If I didn't get a job that makes that much by the time I'm 50, she will forgive the debt completely. I told her if she had all this money to flaunt around, why is she making me pay it back? It's stupid and selfish of her, and if she's going to be like that, I don't even want her money. It's like, look at me, I have the money to pay for your college, but you won't get it unless you do what I want, and if you're successful, then you have to pay me back. I ended up calling my parents for a ride home. She told them what happened, and they keep telling me that my sister is just trying to be generous, and I'm acting like a spoiled brat. Am I the a-hole for not accepting her handouts? You're the a-hole. She spends money on herself. It pisses you off. She spends money to help others. It pisses you off. She offers you money. It pisses you off. You're the a-hole. Typical jealous, short-sighted, immature teen attitude. Have fun with student debt instead. You're the a-hole. Your sister is giving you the opportunity to go to college, but wants to make sure you don't waste the experience. Having a part-time job for spending money, joining at least one club to make friends with a shared interest, are for your benefit, not hers. There's a high probability that she has no real plan for you to pay her back, but is presenting it to you in this manner so that you don't take her money, skip classes, and lay in bed all day. You don't seem to realize how incredibly lucky you are. You're extremely ungrateful.